Good afternoon. What's the name of your name? Thomas. You can hear me? Thomas. Thank you, sir. I'll see you over here. So? I know you're not paying attention. I know. So? <laughs> so? Welcome to the last session of the program for today. Before we move on over to the expert mountains. Uh, we have about 45 minutes. Um, I'm joined here by Kofi, Joanne, and Sora from the three uh, regional districts, and uh, I'll let them talk uh, in a few minutes. I'll give a little bit of a background, a quick update on where we are overall with the HISP network, and give you some insights to some of the activities, uh, collaboration we do. And then I'll, I'll let each of the three districts present the uh, exciting work they've done. To strengthen organizationally the capacity to uh, work with Global Fund and coordinate uh, support in each of the regions. So, this slide is a little bit of a repetition from the very first plenary piece in the uh, game on Monday. I thought it's, it's worth right repeating. Um, this regional approach to capacity building and the choice expertise and country support is really like. The core of the HISP approach, um, and it's very critical uh, in sustaining and, and supporting countries building sustainable features to implementations. Uh, and one uh, critical aspect of, of the HISP groups is that they are there in the country or in their by country over time, providing uh, you know almost lifelong support to the ministry and build trust over time. Uh, we are seen as a very trusted partner that's there. Uh, it's not project based, it's really there uh, long term, and that's really important. If you think of how we design and build the HSP overall, uh, it's also very important for us to have people uh, connected to software development and system design that are in the team, talking to the user, listening, getting new requirements, testing new ideas, and helping the, the core team uh, globally to provide uh, input to the software development process. And as we have seen many examples of this week, uh, when those problems are solved locally, they are also shared in the HISP network, uh, both in terms of things that go back to the core platform, but also a lot of these local innovations, extensions that Austin and others presented uh, this morning. Over time, we also work with a lot of the global partners that support uh, the HIS2 with investments to, to formalize a bit more the HIS group model uh, and also uh, being able to fund it over time so that they can be strong groups providing the support in the ministries. For us, it's important that all these groups uh, share a set of core values related to things like open source, building local ownership in countries, supporting sustainability, integration data use, etc. Uh, we'll share these slides and you can read there's a link there to all the, the values that all the experts are signing when they sign the MOU and, and join probably being part of the disk network. So we have right now 17 groups across Africa, Asia, and Latin America. They're all listed here on the right. Uh, and of course, the University of Oswald is also one of, of the many groups in that network working collaboratively. Uh, what we see is that uh, many of the groups now are led by former PhD students from the PhD school that we uh, are coordinated from Oslo. And there's also still a strong linkage to a lot of the local universities. I think as you mentioned, uh, the work we do with running master programs together with local universities and also uh, having a lot of PhD students from local universities make part of our PhD program. Um, so that's a key part of the capacity building. So I just list a couple of slides listing some of the uh, ways we work together. And we have shared a couple of the innovations and the results. This is a little bit more on the process, how we work together. So one, uh, of course, one very important part is about the sharing of experiences and innovation across regions and across these groups. So we, we organize, uh, you know, formal informal meetings, uh, webinars. We've done a lot of student meetings during the pandemic. Uh, sharing local innovations so that other groups can learn what, what other companies have done and then support their companies. One very good example where we uh, worked a lot over the last days is around the vaccination certificates where we don't have a like a, a solution coming straight from the core but extensions are developed in countries and then 
the way that the same groups are not saying in different approaches to this, we, uh, you know, we facilitate the sharing and we see already a lot of examples of that happening. Uh, we also work on, on Slack, which is really a communication channel where you have all the core developers and the implementers in my team and all the groups. And they, they, you know, they activities, the sharing experiences, asking questions and discussions. Uh, so that's a very likely channel of communication. We also do a bit more kind of formal seminars about technical things on different technical topics. Um, uh, you probably heard by now of the digital packages, the probably job metadata packages. So that's one area where we do a lot of orientation, informal discourse, get feedback from that. And then other technical topics linked to the HS implementations like interoperability, server, security, LMIs, etc., new domains of education, etc. And then, of course, another big area uh, is the Academy program, uh, the DHS training program. So we work very closely with the experts in developing the curriculum, planning training methods, and uh, overall evaluating how this training program is going. And then, of course, there's a lot of facilitation around the world, actually doing these training events, and that's a close collaboration between groups and also the core team in Oslo. Uh, and then we Last week, uh, we had what we call the HISP week, and that is where we try to get together all of us for a week and discuss uh, many, hopefully more on strategic discussions, uh, how to uh, continue to improve the HISP program, strategic discussion linked to how we can better support companies and implementations, and also sharing internally how we can strengthen our own organizations. So we had a very interesting week last week, um, and during the pandemic, we also introduced the work to HISP week, we had a chance to meet uh, several times during the year. Another uh, example of collaborative activity is, is uh, the data use initiative that was going launched by the research program uh, at EIO, working with, with all the FISP groups in bi weekly meetings, uh, with very you know, a lot of participation across the FISP network, where the idea is to learn from local research uh, and interventions linked to data use, how to improve data use and use of the HIS to support decision making. And then more on the software side, this last two points, uh, there are bi weekly product design meetings organized by the DHS product managers. Um, and then these groups and core developers work together on understanding requirements to user stories from the team. And also these groups help to validate, uh, to test and validate new features throughout the development process from that design to the, you know, the beta release and getting feedback. So that's a very important way to, to link software development and, and the implementations to the experts. And then we have one big meeting every year, which is more focusing on uh, building the roadmap for the coming releases. And then uh, the experts come together, they discuss with the ministries of health and education and other government institutions to get requirements from each country. They put together a kind of regional priority list and then they during the, the global meeting where each region comes with requirements from different public areas, and we try to put together a prioritized list for the software development for the coming releases. So I'll over a little bit to this uh, key topic for today and explain a little bit about this new approach called the regional peace clubs, um, which was a model that was uh, initiated by Global Fund. Uh, and a way to decentralize coordination of the DHIS TA, of the company uh, support on DHIS to implementations. Uh, and the idea is to decentralize the governance information from uh, UIO and Global Fund doing it to the his groups doing it in each region. Um, and the drawing on the left is a little bit old, there are some new groups that have joined, but the idea is the same that we have three regional hubs. Uh, and we kind of, there's, it's a HISP group kind of hosting um, the regional hub secretariat and contracted by Global Fund. So these are the three hubs that we present later. On the left there is Western Central Africa, uh, contracted by Global Fund to coordinate and to support in that region. And then you see the groups like Iran, Mozambique, Nigeria, and South Africa, but also supporting countries in that region. And they work collaboratively together on that coordination and support. And then Eastern Southern Africa uh, is hosted by is Uganda, and you see the groups listed. And then in the Asia region, it's uh, hosted by East India. And 
they will provide a lot more details on this. Uh, but uh, the initial stock was to come up with a coordinating mechanism for the, the, the three years of the creation of local sun from 21 to 23. But it's definitely a model to break down. And the idea was that, and this had also a lot of support from all the DHS industries of partners that are supporting and investing in country implementations that, you know, this can be big enough. And we already see some examples, for example, in Asia with the UNFPA, also kind of uh, using this model to support multiple countries in the same region in a, in a more coordinated way. So just a little bit about you know, what's the role of um, our team at the University of Oslo in supporting this model. So we've worked over many years with Double Fund to kind of prepare the concept. We had a lot of discussions with, uh, with the all the groups on governance model. What is the best way to, to have one regional entity, uh, you know, contracted and then we have the, the time to supporting, etc. So we spent a lot of work on that and we are still, uh, we also have a contract sent with the Global Fund, which includes a lot of kind of continuous working on evaluation and guidance to the three districts on uh, improving this model. Um, and then we also have uh, coordinating country support, linking the Global Fund TA to other big kind of uh, multi country support complex. For example, with Gavi, the University of Oslo is coordinating, uh, but it's the same districts and you know, many of the same countries. So it makes a lot of sense to try to align. So these country support activities are not only in isolation, but Global Fund, Gavi, and UNICEF, and other partners supporting countries. Uh, you know, we have a role there from the University of Oslo side. And, see all these activities and complex, we work with the scripts to do that in a coordinated way. So that's complete first and supporting complete uh, in a coordinated way. And then there's also a lot of focus, of course, in for a history to be able to take a big contract like this. Uh, you know, there's strong demand from global fund and you know, other investors to improve admin, governance, finance in the history. And that's something we focused a lot on uh, over the last couple of years. We have increased investments in, in, in staff, uh, admin finance capacity of the individual districts, and also working with the whole fund to improve that. Um, and we have a project supporting an admin finance team here in Oslo, working very closely with admin uh, in the districts. And we hear a lot more about this work later. Uh, and then we also offer their role in facilitating collaboration across the three groups, uh, sharing experiences and learning from each other. One, one example, a concrete example kind of how we work together is that uh, so on this global fund contract, and I think this is this could have been with any other global investor as well. There is a set of activities that global fund are funding and they're listed here at the bottom. These are kind of the HIST activities that are available to uh, this regional grant from global fund. Uh, and in order to be able to provide uh, a stand, this support in a standardized way across the three uh, regions and also make sure that you know, it's, it's high quality work. We work together with the script to provide kind of standardized global work descriptions for each of these activities. And that includes things like what are the expected outcomes and results of this activity, best practice approaches to achieving it, uh, also some estimation in terms of how many days you need to support this. There may be prerequisites in country. For those that attended the previous session, you know, we saw the maturity model and uh, some of the dependencies between the different activities and areas of the HI spectrum. Uh, and then also working with countries to see how can this TA, which is a common entity in a number of days, help countries to then later scale up uh, countrywide or provide them with support. That could be to country grants funding, local uh, funding, etc. And this we did uh, in collaboration with the experts, and they will give some examples for how them, this is done well in practice in, in the different countries. So that was the, the quick intro from my side, and then we hear from the three groups. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. Go on. So we go through the three groups, and then you can take questions at the end. That's okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joan Kumbisha, and I am from this Uganda. But I am responsible for the southern and eastern African region. 
uh, within the history, the history uh, ecosystem. And uh, Ola has spoken a little bit about how uh, the hubs were set up, and that we have three hubs uh, representing the different regions. So maybe I would just, I would like to give a bit of an explanation as to, as to why we have the hubs in these countries and the role of the global fund. So the global fund pretty much um, led the conceptualization. So the hub is not a legal entity, but it is an added management layer within, uh, within the network. And as Ola mentioned, the goal is really around coordinating uh, TA and coordinating funding uh, in critical areas and be able to continue to, to support as many countries as we possibly can. Now, uh, between the hub and each and every single this group, we have an MOU that is signed that states the scope of work and who will be responsible for what. Um, I will go back then to the, the question that I think is obvious, why Uganda, Togo and India? Before the hubs were set up, uh, an area assessment was done to look at the infrastructure within these systems to be able to understand that do we have proper management and financial structures in place to be able to handle uh, this work that goes across different countries. We have the capacity to do that. Uh, this assessment was done by Pricewaterhouse and uh, they looked at several areas that governance, point and evaluation, financial capabilities, things like uh, HR policy and things like that. And from that assessment, certain uh, uh, recommendations were made. In the past year, me and my colleagues, uh, Sarah and Kofi, have been really working hard to fill that gap that, uh, that, uh, that was identified. Say that we do have a financial management policy in place, which is missing here and this gap. These work on which you need to put in place these, um, these, uh, these uh, you know, uh, quality assurance uh, processes. And this is what we've done for the past year to really raise our capacity to be able to uh, offer TA and support uh, the other countries that we are working in. And as uh, mentioned at the bottom of the page here, assessment, these assessments have been really instrumental in strengthening the capacity of our participants, and we are going to uh, escalate, uh, we will continue to do that in the rest of the countries. I would like to invite Sarah and Lee from India to take us through the next step. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Ryan. Yeah, so I think uh, with the deliberations that are happening currently in this uh, half million of groups, as well as the global fund, uh, a lot of attention was given on uh, setting up a management structure within the this hub and the groups so that we have equal participation from all the his group members and each of these structures have uh, defined the number of references against which they operate. So this is how the HIST hub operates at present, which is a common structure in all the three hubs. Uh, each hub has a steady committee, which has a point person and one team member from each of these groups. Uh, they have their tables based uh, basically in a steady committee is an overarching group uh, who looks at the uh, strategic direction and vision in which the hub is moving and kind of coordinating different opportunities in the uh, in the region that we are working, and then with, uh, working with the project management team, assessing the progress of the project, not with respect to what one can say project, the challenges the projects and where interventions are required to be taken uh, in case of such incidents. Uh, this was to meet every quarter and take an assessment of the work done in the last quarter and what should be improved or to have impact better. And if there is an impending issue, it needs to be clarified in the groups uh, for the specific items and those are discussed in these specific groups. Then a more operational structure was set up as a project management team, which can be one or more depending upon the PA uh, which his group is doing uh, in the region. Uh, then on the operation side of things, uh, they do the actual uh, TA planning, drafting uh, 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 the estimated efforts, and do the actual implementation of the TA in fact, they do have their specific POIs as well, which have been approved by the program. 
they supposed to be monthly and they can also plan to have a lot of meetings depending upon the requirements of the technical assistance for the providing the specific um, There were uh, suggestions and recommendations to have uh, hub centric administrative and finance team as well. So each of the hubs have their administrative and finance focal points who are basically looking at the uh, their meetings, the contracts that this hub meeting has signed with its books, the work orders that are getting delivered. For each TA, the funds mentioned, then to ensure that each case group gets paid for the TA that will be in specific fashion. So, this is uh, broadly how the structure has been set up, and uh, there is uh, enough coordination between these three groups working together to ensure that we will be doing the delivery of the So, uh, I'll just copy the comments. Um, so, this is how the, the hub is, um, the process is about how we we initiate the TA technical assistance, how we get it done. So, at the, uh, the, the, the beginning of the process, it doesn't have that um, maturity model assessment, but now it is the, I can say, the requirement for uh, any country to get into that um, TA. So, the first thing to do is to get that T, uh, that maturity assessment done. Once the assessment is done, there are a set of priority actions to be uh, to be done. So it moves to uh, that those requests for TAs that will be tied up to the priority gaps that has been identified from the maturity assessment. And <clears throat> the global fund is saying that uh, for the whole work we don't do it, uh, under the uh, the global farm uh, hub, we need to have 80, 80, no, 80 yes, um, 85% that are coming directly from the maturity model assessment. And 18% will be, uh, and 15% uh, will be uh, on demand request uh, of TAs. So, once we have that, those requests up, then we undergo uh, an approval process. We have a back and forth process with the global fund until the, 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 the TA is, is approved. We have to develop a scope of work that states clearly what activities we are going to uh, implement and what are the deliverables that are awaited from the, the TA. And then we undergo the implementation in the country with the, the country players like the, the HMIS team, the program team, and, and so on. Then once the it is implemented, we undergo a quality assurance process. Uh, it is required for us to quality assure the deliverables that we are having to the TA. So we have two tools to assess the quality of our TAs. We have the client satisfaction survey that is being let's have be completed by the country and also by the, the country team, the global country team. And then we have the first quality review. Both of them are looking at deliverable to ensure that they comply with the quality requirements that has been defined with UIO and with global form. So once we have quality assured those deliverable, then we can close the TA and invoice the, the global form. So I will continue with um, the work we're doing uh, as hub in the WCA. The, the West and Central Africa hub, uh, the lead is uh, the, the host, I can say, the host of uh, this WCA, which is uh, located in Togo, but which covers uh, a bunch of countries in West and Central Africa. So the members of this hub are Nigeria, uh, Mozambique, South Justus, and Rwanda, these uh, groups. And the chair is uh, Aluka. Uh, Aluka is um, the lead for this Nigeria. Unfortunately, he is not able to get there because of administrative considerations. So together we cover 24 countries. If you are in the list of those countries, then you know that we are the to-go persons to help you and achieving your HMIs and DHIs uh, objective to that can catch up the, the funding and the TA from. So I let 
figure out if you're in the list. And uh, then uh, what have uh, what we have been able to achieve until now is to perform the maturity assessment in two countries uh, coming in Togo. Uh, we have completed so far key TAs and there are eight more going. And uh, we have translated the um, maturity model two in French. It is to be reviewed and to be uh, approved so that we can use it. So till now, that's the route we have completed. It's not that much. And we are eager to do more. And that can be done only if you request it. Thank you. Back to you. Again, I'm John from Eastern Southern and East Africa. And um, as I mentioned before, this program that takes the lead in the region, and uh, the chair of our steering committee is Dr. Winfrey Zion uh, from East Tanzania. Uh, the members are his Ethiopia, his Kenya, his Malawi, his Mozambique, uh, his Rwanda, his Tanzania, and his Uganda. Um, we cover uh, countries and territories, 29 of them, and three languages. Now, if you look at this profile, you can definitely see a broad spectrum of uh, different cultures and uh, different languages, and this presents uh, definitely a challenge in terms of implementing certain TA. But as uh, we have every confidence in the skill set and in the ability of the of the leads in these teams to be able to look after the needs of the countries. And I will show that from the kind of work that we've done uh, from starting with the maturity assessment. Uh, so we did a pilot in Rwanda and also in Uganda briefly. And from that pilot, we have gotten approval to do uh, uh, assessments in the following countries, uh, in Djibouti, in Somalia, Somalia, Putin, South Sudan, Sudan, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. Now you can see that some of these obviously are French speaking, some of these are Portuguese speaking, and uh, again, from the profile of the, the teams here, we have every confidence that we are able to do that. We have uh, done um, two, uh, two level one academies uh, in Tanzania and in Rwanda. And uh, in these academies, the teams from Uganda, from Kenya, all came together to support uh, the training and were able to give a broad, uh, broad experience uh, to, the, to the recipients of the training. Um, they have been, we have been, we've managed to take advantage of the skill set that exists within this Uganda uh, by doing training of DHIS to experts in uh, certain private areas. Uh, so Patrick, who everyone I think knows, uh, sits in Uganda. He was able to work with the team in Malawi to deliver an online training. And in this online training, there were teams from all over Southern and Eastern Africa. And it was very interactive. They kept giving feedback as the training was going on. And from that, Patrick also, I wish he was here to you know, share his experience. Because he also discovered, you know, certain areas that he needed to, you know, still explore and and uh, build upon. Um, another one of the so I'll go to the, the kind of uh, TAs that are in the planning stage. Uh, we are going to support tomorrow's uh, Sudan and Eritrea uh, in these areas in upgrading uh, the HRS2, uh, developing HRS2, um, doing certain training and doing. Startup, which are also developing um, a logistics management system. I mentioned the issue of language and adaptation of uh, everything from uh, from uh, this maturity assessment to different uh, training materials, and this is very very vital that it takes place because uh, we have to make sure that any work that we are doing is really as localized as possible and as useful to. The, the teams on the ground. So this idea of translation and adaptation of material is very, very important and central to how we do our work. Thank you very much. That is all from the Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Ms. Tasha, you have previous presenter. We have uh, I have members from his Bangladesh, she's from the Nigeria, Pakistan, Mr. Dakar. He's a and he's been there. 
Um, these are certain countries where these things put the operation and I've been supporting ministries since uh, quite some time. Uh, Bangladesh, Indonesia, working in one country. Uh, Pakistan is an US group that is joining the Hispanic group to their current operation in Pakistan. Uh, Sri Lanka has been supporting Sri Lanka, Maldives, and Timor Leste. Vietnam is supporting Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and Pacific countries in Vanuatu and Solomon Islands. Uh, East India has been working uh, in specific DHS interventions in Myanmar, Nepal, Afghanistan, Bhutan, and Kyrgyzstan, and in Syria, Bukhari, PCA. Um, so, we have initiated our uh, majority sessions in five countries uh, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, Timor, and Pakistan. Uh, there are six more countries that are in the region uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Laos, Nepal, Cambodia, and Solomon uh, Islands. They are still in Thailand as the country of Google's Bangladesh. We did similar to that with other two halves, we organized a regional practice academy uh, with the webinars uh, focusing on COVID 19 vaccination and surveillance plus HIV disease cases, which were implemented in the region. Uh, and as I well mentioned, uh, we were able to use the HACE Hub model to reach out to other communities as well and we did. Very similar work opportunity with the NFPA uh, to carry out uh, um, HMI assessment, uh, specifically focused on, you know, on the RMCH program uh, for the countries in the Asia region, so that we are collaborating again to the outcome. So, this was the last slide of the presentation. Thank you. We have a limited time for questions. If not, we can start the launch early. Can I jump in with a question? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, this is uh, Michelle Monroe from the Global Fund. Uh, first, just to say thanks to uh, all of his pubs because they've done an amazing amount of work this last year to set up this new uh, level up within that work. Um, and uh, and really starting to see a lot of outcomes from that. And then um, just to highlight, uh, say, you know, I think it was as mentioned in the in the presentations, like Global Fund is a is a champion of this. Um, you know, adding this level to the the network, um, but um, but definitely don't want people to think that the the hubs are specific to Global Fund. Um, they're you know this is it's part of the network. Um, we're just um, the first group, I guess I should say, uh, supporting um, our portions of our uh, TA that we would otherwise fund them and uh, supporting that through the his pubs. And lastly, to say, I think, you know, for us, what Global Fund has found um, and one of the reasons why we have supported this so strongly is that um, we're really for the TA that we would normally fund centrally, not just for DHS2, for analytical capacity and other central TA. We're really trying to focus ways to do that um, at a more regional and localized level um, so that you can have this better coordination across and within the countries and across donors and and, um, and uh, other sorts um, localized. We still, of course, have um, TA and such that's going through the grants as well. Um, and, and that is directly funded um, with different host groups. Um, but um, we, um, yeah, just wanted to, uh, to explain that background there. I'm definitely happy if, um, People have any questions about um, that from the kind of um, uh, donor um, lens um, to follow up with folks. Thanks. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. We have two hands. Oh, yeah. Another one from there. Yeah. We have Chris here and then the lady. Okay. 
Moon is a an observation. Maya is an observation. Uh, in, in looking at the countries, here I would say in some countries fall into two uh, uh, this, uh, this house. Now, this was a very simple mission, so I wanted to do some clarification as to how this would be made. I think there are two countries that I saw that you mean it's perhaps not from the same? Yeah. So the screen you must have been over the years of the future. Yeah. So I guess we'll do some clarification on that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So um, as I mentioned before, like one of the problems that we have is that uh, the challenges of languages. So a lot of countries in West Africa, French speaking. There are some countries in Eastern Africa that are French speaking, same thing with Portuguese. So, but uh, physically speaking, they die uh, within Western Africa. So, what we have done is that, uh, for example, this Mozambique was supports uh, Guinea, South Angola, South of which all uh, own the other side of the continent and are in, yes, they are in, they are the biggest country and the most uh, established this group. So, what we do is we work really closely with coffee. Uh, from West Africa to make sure that all the TA that we are doing is coordinated so that there is no overlap. And I'll give you a simple example. Uh, last quarter uh, in West Africa, they did, uh, they did uh, an academy, and uh, so they, his brother Big helped to coordinate and translate uh, in the academy. And then this quarter is going to be done in Eastern Africa, and uh, some of the, the Portuguese speaking uh, countries are going to obviously attend. So we work very closely, uh, we work very closely to coordinate this effort and make sure that we don't leave anyone outside. Thank okay. you. There was one more here, back left. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going from uh, the Blade Show, uh, specifically working on the Red Cross. But uh, we have any experience working with uh, the Malaysian Party of the Submission and Offices on, on implementing uh, revolution uh, packages to start this like Asia and we have Asia and we are not currently working for any um, packages. And if you'd like your help to implement those packages, how how is the collaboration for the community with our Malaysian? Yeah, I mean, we have a uh, collaboration with the uh, member regions in uh, Sierra and Europe where we work with countries in implementing double impact, uh, especially for the EPI. Uh, they already have uh, either we can use some scratch and it's a good package or we adapt the package to actually be served with the rational package. So the package work depends on the use cases. Like for Myanmar, we work with uh, the PIIG to implement the IIG to get a package there. So, but there are countries, uh, especially Syria and Yemen, where we are in direct touch with the shops, the factory office, so helping us to do the only here with uh, package work. So uh, it has been you know, uh, spent on the program in which the company is focusing on and where the package is available for those specific programs. So whenever there's an opportunity to collaborate with the country office to uh, get the site to uh, implement it in specific mm -hmm. Sorry, just a follow-up question. Have uh, for example, if you want to have mm -hmm. so I'm from the headquarters and you want to have a collaborative uh, agreement, who 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 should I talk about? Sorry. Yeah, so um um I think if you follow this case hub structure, then each case hub has uh, the case to be uh, who can be for candidates. And depending upon uh, the country where the intervention has to take place, can be an introduced to the case group who is responsible for managing the adjustment implications of that. So, uh, I think writing the case hub would be a good initiative point, so we will be able to make better connections to get in touch with the right case group. Just a quick year, Michelle is on the phone soon. Um, 
in, for this particular global fund grant, of course, it's a charity that I am focused on. Global fund has a similar arrangement with WHO. So we are working also globally together with the three WHO programs and focus to develop these packages. Some of these are listed here, both case based and aggregates for the three programs. And then we are working with the list groups in, in coordinating implementation of those packages. And you know, with Gavi, there are all the packages with immunization and surveillance. Um, yeah, and similar examples with other um, programs. Coffee, that's something. Um, <clears throat> just to say that, uh, for example, in Burkina Faso, the work we have done uh, to support uh, TB tracker development was based on the, the packages, the WHO recommended packages that is being developed uh, together with UI. So, uh, the same thing with the immunization packages that we uh, implemented with the support of GAN all over the countries, and also with the surveillance packages. And be it uh, ideas or, or cases. Happen. So, I mean, using those packages, uh, where you and us together, and uh, the other beneficial to the countries, uh, we, uh, some, in some countries have been doing it in, uh, together with the WHO, the office, uh, the country office, or uh, UNICEF. And in West and Central Africa, we, has been, uh, we, are, we have been able to push. Uh, national data into the regional regional database uh, regarding surveillance and uh, uh, immunization as well. So uh, there are uh, quite well ongoing uh, collaboration and with the uh, WHO and using those packages. I don't know if Karen wants to add something. Yeah, please. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Esther, for being ready. Well, I just want to comment on the strengths of the organization that we have in the past year. It was a blessing to contract with the Global Fund and see the packages that are distributed to the Global Fund program. But actually, even before this hub system was formalized, we realized that the main hub network was really more efficient. So, for example, the acquisition um, support that really picked up in the past year, let's say 2018, 2019, uh, there was a lot of problems with the ritual handbook. And the fact that there was two, uh, two East that were really needed to coordinate the offices, it was not really the right way to launch the example afterwards. Because uh, it's not as uh, much, it's no way they can coordinate with the nine keys in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. So it was in practice more efficient, I think, for everyone. Um, and, and then this has been coming after the formalizing this mm -hmm. system. So this was just an illustration. I was actually looking forward to all the address to some of the papers in the program. And the second point I wanted to do, I think I am ready. Yes, but in the country this report we've seen uh, a huge or a huge demand for DHS in the EU region. And uh, um and I think is also uh this is quite picking up as well. So I'm always calling, I'm always not to you to you at the show, but I'm always calling that this country has strengthened and they more kids created and present and they are growing maybe well kids organized as well as strong regions support and go because it's really huge demand and I think you have this sort of specificity. And my last point was about that. I think it's it's even to each country as well with its own uh you know impact and the sub-national context and all of that. I think it's reached for uh, some Level network that can defend the specificities of the region. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is important. You mentioned a lot of the language barriers, the challenges that are specific to some region. So I think the values of this help in the divorce of the challenges that are mentioned to the problems that we need to solve. 
Thanks very much. I just comment quickly. I think there are definitely other regions in the world that are not <laughs> on this slide. So, and we are working, uh, and, and the network is expanding. Uh, so, we are probably not done. It's a thing like Abu Rama, Syria, and Western Turkey, and you know, Arab speaking, which I expert, and we are exploring ways to strengthen uh, in the MENA and the region, Arabic speaking uh, at least. And I think having a hub. And the experience of some of these groups like India with not Sri Lanka in, in helping new groups to be established, I think is very powerful. And Sri Lanka has an important role in mentoring the new group in Pakistan as well. We are working also in Latin America. Uh, there's a small group in Colombia, and we're also working with other uh, people in the region with long term experience in the region to see what, how we can better establish support. Uh, and regions are very different, and you know, a lot of that works in East Africa may not work in, in Southern America. So I think we are looking at different approaches that are doing different things. Um, but it's definitely a common emerging uh, network. Another region is also Eastern Europe, Central Asia, with the Russian speaking, a different culture, uh, and also being able to identify local partners there and, and link them to the existing network. It's important in supporting companies in more local ways. We have a few minutes before we open the lounge uh, search, so we can take a uh, few more questions and we can we can talk. So if there are no questions, I can just maybe explain quickly uh, the expert lounge. So in, in the SCADA, um, you see that it's a mix of sessions that are, have been assigned in the auditorium um, and some that don't. So the main groups that we have in the auditorium assigned will be out in the lobby area and the revision and table is the question assigned, for example, on um, Android configuration, expressing enhancements, um, extending features to implementation support security privacy and packet. Those will be kind of table stations out there. The fact is that we use this start, where you can approach the experts and have more discussions. And then there will be two uh, sessions that are more group sessions that will be in auditorium one and four. So here in this auditorium, there's a session called discussion on problems and challenges that countries face in each other. That's what you asked right now. Good luck with them. And then in the auditorium four, there is an expert lounge discussion on previous educational Yeah. So let's go out there and, and approach the experts and enjoy the lounge. Thank you so much. Thank you.